On this episode of the Fit Rock Star Show, we have eight times, that's eight times, Miss Olympia, Linda Murray. Yeah. That's me. That's me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm such a fan. I'm fangirling right now. Yeah, uh, you're, you're a sweetie. Yeah, we first connected. I remember that email you sent me. Gosh, that was what? No. You actually sent me an email. Yes. 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 I didn't. I, look, I was a big fan of yours mm-hmm. for many years. That's mm-hmm. why I got into bodybuilding. You and, and obviously and Kim and all that, Kim Chavesky. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my fiance at the time, mm-hmm. I guess he reached out to you because yeah. I was doing the Arnold. That's right. I was scared because I, you know, I had just battled uh, pneumonia. It was four weeks off from the show and I had really bad okay. pneumonia and I was in the yeah. hospital. And then I get this email and I'm seeing Linda That's Murray. Right. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. I couldn't yeah. believe it. And yeah. and uh, it was this long email, and I still have it, and I printed it out. Do you? I do. So I did that. Well, that was when? That like was in 2000, 2000 like maybe? Nine. Okay, yeah. I want to say nine. Yeah. But I couldn't believe that you took the time mm-hmm. to write me an email. You don't even know me. You don't know mm-hmm. who I am. I'm just some yeah. nobody. Yeah, th- yeah, right, right, right. And you took the and time that, encouraging me about when you competed and the nerves mm-hmm. and being strong and yeah. mentally focused. Yeah. Well, you're you're a female bodybuilder. You, you know, during that time, very important because you were trudging yes. along. You yeah. were part of that that held us together. You know, and so like 2002 and three. 2004, I retired, and so around that time of that letter, I mean, for me, you guys are super important because I don't want you, I didn't want you to lose the, um, that energy, mm-hmm. right. it takes a lot to do it does. What, what, we, mm-hmm. what I did and what you do now, mm-hmm. you know? What do you think is the hardest thing about women's bodybuilding, what, the mental aspect of it? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, the hardest part, um, yeah, I definitely think that it's really like an inside job, you know, um, we all handle it in different ways. So for me, and it, I guess it depends on when you come up, when you came up in the sport, like for me, it was a little challenging to let go of, and it's not let go of femininity, you know, but it's. Um, it's a different aspect of what most like extreme athletes, whether it's track and field or whatever, and you reach that level. For us, our extreme takes place on the body. And so people can see it. And there are things that happen in that last four weeks where, you know, it feels really good to train hard. If it feels great to be a woman and be able to, at the time, bench press, you know, 185 pounds or maybe 225 or squat 315. But when you get in the final phases, that's when the mind and you allowing your body to go where it needs to go so that you, uh, you, you can win. Mm-hmm. So I think that, w- that was challenging for me toward the end. Like, you know, always that two weeks prior, Mm -hmm. because my face, I would get so lean, and um, I had to let go. Well, what was the uh, hardest thing about you when you competed, like the challenging thing that you had? Mm -hmm. Was it the diet, or that was a piece of cake for you, or? Mm. What was the most challenging part? Um, Yeah, the diet, I'm going to say, yeah, on the beginning, the, you know, like getting sure. into the diet yeah, into and really it. transitioning yeah. where you get in. So there are different phases from a four-week period to another four-week period. It was like you arrive mm-hmm. at a place and you can see mm-hmm. the results and then you have a new energy to continue on. So, of course, the hardest part, I would say, 10 days out from the competition 
And for me, it was a constant obsession with looking at my legs and waiting oh, wow. for my legs to come in, huh. you know, um, and always feeling like, is this enough? You know, did you want to train more legs or? Uh, you know, I mean, for me, I really, I was never about more is better. I was always about training smart and all in the same with dieting smart and same with every little aspect of what we do, what I had to do. So, um, yeah. So I got to ask you the million dollar question. I mean, mm -hmm. I got lots of questions to ask you. But one of the things that always comes in my mind, seeing someone like you, the champion mm -hmm. eight time Miss Olympia, which there only is one Miss Olympia, right? <laughs> Right? Yeah, what do you mean at a time? Well, I mean as far as like you have the different divisions, but they right. always say Miss Olympia instead yes. of putting the Miss Olympia Fitness or right, Miss Olympia right, Figure right. or Figure there's Olympia. There's only one Miss Olympia. Yes, yes. Does that annoy you? Some, I mean, that's not the question I'm going to ask yeah. you. Yeah. Does that annoy you sometimes when you see that? You know what? It doesn't annoy me. I think now, luckily, because I'm in the midst of all of the current champions mm -hmm. and divisions, mm -hmm. uh and I have a voice to tell the women in figure and fitness and bikini and wellness, listen, like, I'm the beginning. Bodybuilding, we are the beginning. Yes. We laid the foundation for you. You know, uh, I was at a show recently, and it's a young girl. She had to be, like, 21, and they were just asking these questions, and so they looked at me and my body, and they were like, so were you in, where were you in? Were you in figure, or, I, or were you in uh, women's physique? And I said, no, because figure did not exist. <laughs> right. uh, fitness did not exist. It was just women bodybuilders. And they were trying to wrap that around their brains sure. and receive that. So. What do you, so here's my question. What do you think of women's bodybuilding now Versus then, and I say that as far as mm -hmm. the quality, mm -hmm. the conditioning, mm -hmm. um, the mm. posing is, you know, it's, it's okay. But looking, for me, looking at it back then, holy smokes, mm -hmm. every single woman bodybuilder was tough competition, mm -hmm. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, So now when you look at it, you know, uh, some of the girls aren't that great of condition. Mm -hmm. Beautiful physiques, yeah, but they're not... In that condition. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back when you were competing, these girls weren't razor sharp, not right. feminine, they're Correct. beautiful, hard, gorgeous muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's kind of different. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious to know what your thoughts are on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that with women's bodybuilding, we've been on this kind of roller coaster ride, mm -hmm. and it existed in the 80s, the 90s, 2000. It existed, um, of course, it's obvious that it did when we had the hiatus from the Olympia. And because of that, um, it was just all this back and forth and confusion, um, I would say. And I don't even know if it, were, if it was necessarily the, uh, if it, the officials, but of course, when it, that makes everybody confused, sure. the promoters. Sure. and. Right. And then it trickles down to the women. So we lost uh, that momentum, I think, that we had, and we were trying to hold on to yeah, it. And in that period of time, you know, um, and that's where I think a benefit, I see a great benefit in, like, in women's physique. Mm -hmm. Because you see a lot of women go into that division a little bit in denial, that they're Denial. that they are women bodybuilders. Yeah, absolutely, they have that full muscle. Mm -hmm. They're at that uh, the top mm -hmm. of women's physique, and if they train just a little bit too hard or <laughs> too much, like they're just going to keep getting better, right. more muscle maturity, mm -hmm. and so that's where we get a lot of uh, we get a lot the of women, women that are bodybuilders, and yeah. they go. So I think that the momentum we lost some momentum. And um, we are definitely back on track, Absolutely. I feel. So is it safe to say, because I hear people always saying, save women's bodybuilding. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're not 
a dead sport like a lot mm-hmm. of people think that we are. Yeah. I mean, listen, Jake Wood has done a lot for women's bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. And let's be real. If it wasn't for Jake Wood, mm-hmm. yeah, where would we be right now? Yeah, yeah. And matter of fact, I mean, and I think Jake said it well at uh, the first Olympia, because of women bodybuilders, um, the sport is really flourishing in all the other divisions. So mm-hmm. they've greatly benefited from his love for for the women. And you know what it is? It's just his love and respect for the entire sport. You know? Right. Yeah. And, and in that process, it's, he stepped in the right time. Tell me what was it like when you went into your first Olympia? What was that mm-hmm. like? Did you know you were going... Oh, let me actually scoop back a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You won your pro card at the North American. Yes. Right? Uh, which is very, pre- the North American mm-hmm. was prestigious. A yeah. lot of our top people, mm-hmm. like yourself, mm-hmm. came from the North American. Yeah. yeah. So from that moment, when did you know that you were going, that you wanted to be Miss Olympia? Did you know right there and then? Or did it take you some time? Mm. You know, I I knew that I wanted the Olympia. I that was the plan without question about Even going it. international or the North American? Anyway. No, no. Going into the North American, no. I'm going to say I really did take it one step at a time, and I stayed focused on what was in front of me. So I wasn't one that, you know, I hear athletes come up sometimes and they, they're talking about, you know, I want to I wanna compete. I want to be a pro. or I want to, And that's great to say, you know, and they haven't yet competed in the nationals or or placed in the top five in the nationals. I mean, it's obvious if you go to nationals, most likely you want to turn pro. But the same with the, with the Olympia. For me, I stayed focused on the North American. And I tend to, I did that for every single show up to. Um, I did not start thinking about the Olympia until after I won the North American okay. and a turn pro. Then I said, kind of like, now what? You know? Like, what's next? What, you know, like, start thinking about how do we make money? How do they make money as bodybuilders? Right. Um, so when did know. Joe Weider, when did you first meet Joe? Was it before you won the Olympia or is it? Y- yes, it I met Joe before I won the Olympia. How did and, that happen? And that happened um, because of actually Bill Dobbins. Oh. Yeah. Bill yeah, Dobbins. Bill Dobbins. And that's why I'm like, uh, just forever, like, really grateful. Sure. We have a really unique yeah. relationship. Yeah. He's done some amazing yeah. photos of me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he's really been also confidant in the sense that he helped me many times to, he saved me from me, like, a lot of the the crap. Sure. And I'm going to say, like, the shit. And when you say crap, <laughs> that you, you go mean through. as far as, like, the... The mental. Yeah. The, with other people with around? With other people. Yeah. Can you give us an example? With other people. Oh, yeah, I got a great example. <laughs> I got a go. great example. Yeah, you know, um, so again, you're focused on the Olympia, you win the Olympia. Sure. And people are, they always think that just because you hold the title that you get this, this, and that. Like, this is a guarantee. You're going to be on the cover. You're going to make the most money out of all the women bodybuilders. You know, they have all these things in their head that they think is a guarantee. And so it started now at this point. Now it's a business, okay? I miss Olympia. Wrap my head around. It's a business now. And um, so Joe was doing contracts with different athletes, especially the women that particular year because they had uh, um, Vince McMahon came on board and he oh, started wow. the um, WBB, yeah, I yeah, think. I yes, yeah. yes. And so then Joe decided to put women under contract and that really uh-huh. started to happen in that year, right when I won the Olympia in 1990. So anyway, I had a manager, which is great. He was involved in the industry. Uh, uh, and uh, S- Steve Carroll, and there was an issue because one of the competitors, she was making more money. 
-hmm. Like her contract was higher. And this girl had placed like 13th in the Olympia. And here I am, the champion. Right. So, and of course, like, why would I know something like that? Like, again, right. you know, that was just also the reason I know that is because that person wanted me to know that oh. because of their insecurity about, well, you know, I'm 13th in the world, but guess what? I make more money than you. Right. Yeah. That type of thing, right. you know. Um, and also about being on covers. Like, automatically people thought you deserve to be on the cover. You're Miss Olympia. Yeah, you're so, Miss Olympia, right. So now I get that pressure yeah. from all these outside, my close friends, people in the industry, people that are just fans. And see, all that outside stuff gets in your head, and it affects your ability to stay focused for the next competition and win. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that, I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. And so that's where I say Bill Dobbins really helped me a great deal because when I would go to that place, I had him where I could have a conversation with him. And I was upset because I'm not on the cover. Sure. You know, right. and it's the first year and then the second year and the third year. I think I got my first cover when I was like going into my fourth Olympia. And um, Bill just reeled me back in. He, he had the ability to be, if you know Bill Dobbins, mm -hmm. he's very frank. Oh, yeah. He's very straight to the point. <laughs> and, you know, that's where he really helped me a great deal. Yeah. Same here. He helped me a lot, too, my first uh, national qualifier. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this man at all. I just knew when he shot with you, mm -hmm. and I saw your photos, and I contacted Bill. I, I mm -hmm. flew to uh, Culver City mm -hmm. for the Excalibur. And I, and I go, you know, I said, he's, we um, hook up a photo shoot. I open a door, here's this man, you know, he's a mm -hmm. tall man. And I'm like, okay, cool studio. <laughs> but he saw me when I took off and put down my, my bikini. He's like, oh, my God, where did you come from? Uh -huh. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I've got some great photos. The next yeah. day I hear this guy yelling in the crowd. He's telling, he taught me how to pose. Uh -huh. I didn't know how to pose. Uh -huh. I didn't know anything about bodybuilding. This is mm -hmm. like my first... A national qualifier, but anyway, he helped me a lot. I'm mm -hmm. always grateful. Yes, for him. he's so well rounded in the kind of like a jack of all trades to he help you with is. your posing, right? Yes. Who would think? And but how cool that you allowed him to oh my god do that. You I know? didn't realize how big he was either. He knows mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. He knows a lot of stuff. Arnold, but anyway, he knows um, a lot of stuff. Yeah, he does. So when you met Joe, that mm -hmm. had to be mind blowing, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was mind blowing. Wow, really mind blowing. It was like he jumped right out of the, you know, magazine. I met him at his house. I had breakfast with him oh, wow. in his backyard, and um, I think he was eating cereal, some kind of cereal or something. And um, I remember what I had on. I had on this orange, loud orange jumpsuit <laughs> with this orange, orange uh, fingernail polish and. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I just sat there with him, and I watched uh, him eat and interact with Bill. And so oh, Bill was there with you, Bill too. was there, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, Bill was there, and I watched Bill be somewhat defiant with Joe. Joe oh. was telling him what he wanted for a photo, and Bill was telling him why that wasn't a good idea, and then Joe was like, no, but this is what I want, and Bill was like, no, but that's not, doesn't make sense. And it's back and forth. And I was sitting there getting a little uncomfortable. And I, and I looked at Bill. I was like, Bill, what the hell? Like, do what the man wants. Right. He's paying the bills. Right. You know. So what, what, what happened? Did Bill win or did Joe win? Um, I would say Joe won. And the reason Joe won is because Joe was smart enough. He had, he had a way of maneuvering through situations like that. I mean, and Bill knows that he was known to be difficult. And um, 
Bill's still around to this day. But it takes a, a calm, clever individual because he recognized, Joe recognized what Bill had to offer mm -hmm. and his talent, but he also was like, you're difficult, Bill. I'll make you think right. that you've won, but at the end of the day, I own the magazine, right. and when the pictures get there, and if it's not what I want, then. Right. That's how he, that's <laughs> how he rolled. I love it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Out of all your Olympia wins, which one do you think is your, which one, or actually out of all your wins, any show you've won, mm -hmm. which one holds the most sentimental value to you? Um, the one that holds the most sentimental value. Hmm. I, I'm going to say my, my return. Yeah, that was a good. My return good. in 2002. Yes, because I was a different person. I was, I was, I recognized my value, my worth. Um, it's just more connected with self. And um, I knew what I was doing, you know? And I wasn't a girl in fear. No, you can definitely you know? see that. When you mm -hmm. when you came out, everybody mm -hmm. went crazy. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yep, I, I worked with Chad Nichols on, on that one, so... Yeah. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, he did. Everything was changed he? around that time, too. You know, coming back, I mean, before we were on our own, and now it's like you have trainers and coaches and people that coach you, you know. So what do you think? So that's something that you bring up that's interesting to me. What do you think now that all these athletes, a lot of them, mm -hmm. have these teams? Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, teams, they got somebody for every single thing. Mm -hmm. You didn't have that back then, right? No, we didn't have teams. I remember when they first said something about teams. I was like, teams? Yeah, the only team I remember was, uh, you know, in the gym, and you have a group of people right. that just all want to get together. Right. We were a team, and let's yeah. work out together, right. super set and giant sets and all that kind of stuff. At first, it was a little, like, strange to me because I was so used to everything that we do. It was, like, as an individual. And um, But now, I mean, I really I recognize the importance of it for the athlete. I know the importance of it for me as a promoter, producer of shows, you know, and... Um, but I think it is a benefit, especially if you have the, you know, like the groups like Bikini, Figure, um, Wellness. Uh, a lot of these girls that are coming up, they're very young, you know. Like, I think I was like, I don't know, 27, 28, like when I turned pro. Oh, wow. So you got girls that are like, you know, 21 mm -hmm. and 22, and they feel a part of. They just have to know that um, there's, like, one plan <laughs> for for all of you guys, pretty right, much. Right. And that coach, or, is, he'll vary it. But you got to do your work. You have to know your body. Mm -hmm. You have to be secure. Because mm -hmm. if you expect him to give you a lot of attention, I don't care if you paid him just as much as some may not pay anything. Well, because they're placing in the top five, they, they have a talk show or something. Right. Yeah, something, you know. There's always something. It's right? something, yeah. 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 Hmm. So I want to talk about some of your awards you've gotten. You are also a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct me on the, what year was that? Uh, I think the Hall of Fame, that was like, uh, let's see. I want to say it was like 2005 or 2005. something. And then yeah. you, got, you was also in uh, Dr. Bob's all of yes. Too. Yes. That was How really exciting. That it was heavy. It's yeah. Heavy, yeah. That was that one. I was really excited about the the um, International Hall of Fame because I was there with um, Evander Holyfield. Wow. Um, Michael. I'm trying to think of Michael's name. He played uh, uh, Spawn. Michael oh, J. I know White. Yeah. Wow. I was there with um, Triple Triple, Triple H. H. Um, yeah, and also, I'm trying to think of his name, famous MMA fighter. It was a good year. The first. It was a great year. Wow. I was so, like, I just kept looking at Evander Holyfield. I was like, wow. Did he, he still have his ear? No, he's... His... Yeah, that was, yeah, he, the ear was missing. Part of it was missing at Is that, that time. Is that the first thing you looked at? <laughs> I did kind of sneak around and, like, take a look. I think it's hard not to. Right. 
Tyson no, bit your ear. So what other awards do you have that I'm not aware of? Um, what other awards do I have that I'm not aware of? A um, ton, I know. but Yeah, that's... like, well, some that I'm proud of from, like, uh, Western Michigan University. So that was challenging for me to, you know, I'm an alumni mm-hmm. there, and mm-hmm. uh, so that's really exciting. And what did you uh, study over there? Um, I was in the pre-law curriculum, my major wow. political science. I huh. thought or planned to go to law school, but that was just kind of what kids do. I want to go, I'm going to be a lawyer, a doctor. So you, you decided know. not to. I decided not to, yeah. You know, because education, I, I wasn't uh, really strong enough. I know if anything I want to do, if I put my mind to it, I can. Oh, yeah, of course. But by that time, my passion, my passion it has always been uh, exercise, health and fitness, athletics, always. And that's what I thrive at. You know, tell me about your wonderful mother. Yeah, I know you had a hard time for a while because you didn't get a chance to see her during the COVID and stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. You just recently seen her like a few months ago or something. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. So it's been great. My mom's doing; she's doing well. She'll be eighty-six. Oh, uh, God soon. bless her. Yeah, Aww. yeah. I'm so blessed to, that she's still here. And my mother, she's always been uh, very supportive mm-hmm. of everything that mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, um, you know, bodybuilding probably was a little challenging for her sure. as far as acceptance. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I mean, they're like, well, what is this? You're changing what you're eating, your body's changing, you know, your face. And Did she freak out when she'd see, like, the diet face? Um, I think my mom... She didn't really freak out about the diet phase. My father was probably, he was, oh. yeah, it was more challenging for him. Mm-hmm. And I could tell because he would uh, try to explain to his friends uh-huh. why his daughter wants big biceps and, as they said, look like a man. That's what your father would well, say? Well, that's what they, you know, he oh. he was, in a, in a sense, he didn't, but that was just the norm, you sure. know, kind right. of that right. thought. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, my father, my father, he'd be in his 90s now if, if wow. he were still living. So, yeah, if he was living. It is difficult. Even Do you find that now versus then that it's lightened up with the the, the name calling towards women bodybuilders? Mm. Like, you know, oh, she looks like a man or mm-hmm. oh, she's, if you feel like it's changed. <sighs> it seems like it's women are more into the bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just not seeing them as much on stage as much as I sure. like. But they are. On social media, on Instagram, mm-hmm. you see these women pump, and they're big. Yeah, you know, and I would love to get them on the stage, but they don't want to. Mm-hmm. They don't want to diet. Yeah, yeah. Nobody likes to diet. Yeah, nobody likes to diet. No. Um, I think it is. It's definitely better, and I and I think that's for a, like a variety of different reasons, like the culture today. People are just like the youth, like. Mm, they feel free. It's it's sure. much more open. Sure. It is. Yeah. And less uh, people minding their own business, staying in their own lane, that you do, you know. Wait a minute, did you say people are best. minding their own business now? Yeah. Well, I don't think that they're minding think their that, own business. Yeah, based, on, more based on social media. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, like now get... they're open to say whatever yes. they want to say. Absolutely. I do agree with that. Huh. They need I to do sh- agree shut with their that. mouth. Yeah. You would probably have that answer. What? More so than I, as far as oh. like, because I'm not walking around with big biceps anymore, so I don't. Oh my have god! That to get you know what I'm saying? Are you kidding me? I'm sitting across oh. from you. You still got it going on. Do yeah. you know how many people every time they see you at a show, or whatever? Oh my god, Linda looks great. Oh, oh did you see really? her arms? Wow, really? You do. You okay. look phenomenal. That's great. Thank you. You don't I'll think see, you I'll look? See that. You don't. I mean, I know it's Girl. different compared to. Yeah. Which you used to be, but you're in great shape. I am better about, you know, we we all in this industry struggle with as soon as the competition is over with and we gain 10 pounds, you know, we start using the word I'm fat, I'm out of shape, <laughs> I'm this. And I'm like, girl, you are so, you know, I look back at pics of myself when I really believed like I was like out of shape. And so now I'm like, hey, like I better be comfortable. Let me tell you that photo shoot you did on the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. That was hot. Yeah, it was that hot. Was, yeah, hot. 
That's right. Is that how you do it? That was sexy hot. How many uh, how many DMs do you get a day? I'm sure you still get lots of people who weirdos and stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I do, do get a lot. Yeah, I always know them too. Like, and you get one, and they start asking questions about size, dimensions of body parts, oh. and I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah, block, delete. Yeah, yeah. I get you know it. what the coolest thing though for us? We are so honored to have you at. You know, of course, you being an ambassador of Wings of Strength and working with Wings of Strength being a part of Femflex Friday. But for me, when I first saw you um, at the Wing Strength event, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. This is Linda Murray. You know, oh, you can't so believe cute. it because you're out there. You are literally, yeah. you don't care who it is. You're mm-hmm. talking to every single person. Mm-hmm. Listen, it could be Cyclops. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't. It could be, and I love it. You, I you, love it. You give everything to these people, mm-hmm. the fans, yeah. the athletes. And that really means a lot mm-hmm. because you don't have to do those things, but mm-hmm. you choose to. Yeah, well, I know what the athlete, I know what you guys, how hard you've worked. I, can, I remember. And it's so intense that when you're not actually doing it, you can kind of forget. Mm-hmm. So I always have this um, special place prior to prejudging where I just wish I could, like, really have a conversation with each competitor, hmm. uh, one-on-one, I wish. <laughs> because it's just, it's just that thing that happens where it's like the mother in you, like the things that you know and you want them to really understand and to enjoy this time and to not get wrapped up in where they place or they were in the first or they didn't even call me out last and... Just really enjoy the journey. Right. That's what you You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And gosh, and I don't know, it's weird because it took me a long time to really understand the importance of being present. Um, What does that mean? What What do you mean by that? What do you mean by being present? Um, You mean like showing yourself at the shows or, you know, coming, mm -hmm. speaking to people? What Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Yeah, being present. What present means is, is like, For example, right now, uh, during this interview, I you have to be like have your be slowed down enough and at peace where I'm present, and so our conversation that we're having, I'm not thinking about the last question that you asked me that I thought I didn't answer properly. Okay. Or yeah. with the enough energy or whatever, and I'm not thinking about the next question, you know. And I think that that's where it's um, just that simple thing. And I think when people get that, like the journey of being on stage, like from the moment you are behind the curtain and they call your lineup, they call you out, feel being there, and then walk out and look at the bright lights and look at the audience and really breathe and be present. And the more you do that, the better your experience will be in everything that you do. I agree. Absolutely. And, I mean, I'm just going to throw this in there. Mm-hmm. That's be, good. I'm going to be silly as well for a yeah. second. Uh-oh. I think a lot of these people who are on stage, uh, 80% of them are high. Mm-hmm. High on like... The, They're I'm high on something. Or like an edible, like yeah. an edible yeah. or marijuana yeah. to mm-hmm. calm the nerves. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, let's be honest. I think that that helps relax. Mm-hmm. A mm-hmm. lot of people are nervous when they go on stage. Mm-hmm. So I notice now that that's a big thing where marijuana, CBD, whatever you mm-hmm. want to call it, mm-hmm. is coming in. How do you feel about that? Do you think that that's good? Do you think that... Because some people are afraid of yeah. uh, marijuana, talking mm-hmm. about it with uh, the bodybuilding. But I think that's something that I personally... Mm-hmm. I would love to have like a Sergio Oliva on my uh-huh. show and him yeah. teaching me like how what's, what's so great about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So right? Serge, was he known for like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. Well, he's very open about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can say, I mean, man, marijuana was like one of my favorite... Favorite mind-altering substances. Really? <laughs> I have to say, oh, yeah, like, 
You know, the thing, though, for me is with with marijuana, I've had, it, like, some that doesn't make me nervous or paranoid, but most of the time it makes me paranoid. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'd have to do a couple of, I don't know, to, for me, it, it wouldn't work going on stage. Now, oh, okay. when I trained, I enjoyed doing it. Right. Because you can zone out yes. and stuff? I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, it kind of helped to um, make up for the uh, substitute, me having the ability to eat. The question uh, is, the thing is, you just can't get the munchies right. and then eat other stuff. It's over, not, right? Yeah. yeah. Got to eat what you're you gotta, scheduled you to eat. See. You got to eat. And yeah. not more. So I do agree with the fact that I think it's good to use um, marijuana like mm -hmm. when you're training because I think it gets you in the yeah. zone. And to me, it mm -hmm. makes you focus more on, mm -hmm. on the muscles and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, it does. Just, I know. loved it. I really did. And I and honestly, I think did it, when I had to do it, like there was no like card and going to, to a store and, <laughs> you know, you had to. Get was it there from Willie on the streets or something? With little jackets yeah, I them. have friends. You know, you <laughs> go get it like that. But oh, other than that, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah, like it was that. cool. I, again, well, I love it. I, I mean, I would like to have an episode where I'm I got somebody who's an expert, like a Sergio, uh -huh. to show me and explain to me. Okay, what's going on here? What's because I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, um, I think it's something good to put mm -hmm. out there. Also, it's mm -hmm. good for inj uh, injuries mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. sleeping. Yeah. Which I know as a bodybuilder, I don't sleep very well. But uh, anyway, so you moving on. I just yes. had to ask you that because that yeah, was that important. was. I think is a. I have nothing, nothing against it. You heard right. it here first. Yes, I'm serious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> congratulations on the Atlanta Pro. That's mm -hmm. a new show this year. Yes. So let's see. You have Savannah. You got the Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm missing another one. No, I I had one in Detroit. No, in Detroit. In Norfolk. In, yes, like but the Norfolk. Um, we switched gears, yep. and yes. So yep. now it's just Atlanta and Savannah. So when is the Atlanta show? That's Atlanta July? is um, it's July sixteenth. Sixteenth. Oh, that's and, be a great show. And uh, Savannah is September tenth. Okay. July. Now you know you have so Margie, July and September. Margie Martin's coming into your show. I heard yeah, it's going to be good. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And that's you know, man, it just I mean that's pretty awesome it is uh, it really I, is because because she already plays she doesn't have to compete again she doesn't no you know and but, for her to do that it's i'm honored but listen she's determined this year to win an olympia title mm -hmm. could it be done mm -hmm. absolutely yes because i look at it like this it's anyone's game right mm -hmm. i mean is that oh is, that, I mean, <laughs> tell me if i'm wrong <laughs> oh you you're not you're right because i think if you're miss olympia and you get comfortable I already know. What is the role? Let me ask him. As a Miss Olympia winner, and I'm talking from previous and, and whoever, what is the main role of a Miss Olympia, you feel? Mm -hmm. What's are the you, main role like of a, Miss Olympia? Are you like the ambassador? Should you be? What do you feel a Miss Olympia should be doing? I do feel like always like and being an ambassador is important. I think it's important for all of us. To be, to be completely honest. All of us, honest. every single. All, yeah. Every single competitor yes. that competes at that Olympia or to me, athletes that even compete, I don't care where, like NPC, like it's important um, to represent our sport. We have enough problems and enough How do know, we represent stereotypes yes. and things that we have to deal with. How do we represent it though? Like, what do you mean by that? Being like, are you, do you mean like when we're at a, a show or when we're out in public, we're always. Yeah. Represent it in a positive That's way. That's right, in a positive okay. way. Because just think about it. Uh, people that don't know our sport, if they see, let's say they see a women's uh, figure competitor, women's physique competitor, female bodybuilder, in their heads, we're all bodybuilders. Like, Correct. We're right. extreme. Right. Yeah. When you see a woman that has shoulders and biceps and Forget triceps, it. it's like, okay, mm -hmm. she's extreme. Mm -hmm. She's a bodybuilder. So I know that we diet and we're going through and we don't have uh, the, um, how can I say it, not stamina. You're tired. You're going through a lot. You want to eat. But it's never, there's never an excuse to behave badly or to no, be mean. Because what do people think when they see a bodybuilder? Oh, she's strong. Probably think 
mean, she's tough, <laughs> she's manly, she's aggressive, you know, and so you go out there and you put that energy out there, then you're, you know. Like a first impression. When first you see impression. Them, yeah. I it's totally a first impression. It. Yeah. I mean, because I'm, I'm going to say, like, for example, I mean, I don't think a lot about being black because I, I am, I am. I don't think about, oh, I'm black, I'm a female. But when I go and I go to a restaurant and it's time to tip, like for me, I know the stigma and that people in that industry said, oh, we don't tip well or blacks don't tip. Oh, or, gosh. you know, so for me, right. a lot of times, I mean, I'm going to show right. that I, I'm uh, schooled, I, I know, I understand this right. industry. Right. And so yes. I have something yes. more to, of course to represent. Yeah. That's the way I feel. Some people might see that differently. Right. I feel the same with, yeah. with bodybuilding and mm-hmm. with athletes. Like the first thing people think is steroids and the first thing people think is steroid rage mm-hmm. or, you know, so, you know. I like how you put that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, you're right. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Um, some people don't think like that, though, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, you have always been such a great role model, mm-hmm. of course, uh, being an ambassador, being an eight-time Miss Olympia, very well-spoken, mm-hmm. and again, so kind, and you keep it very real. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, I try to keep it real. I do. I have to ask, what, what was it like being on Geraldo? Okay. Oh, yeah. As- um, it was good. I think that uh, being on Geraldo, I was on there twice. That was one of the best experiences because he, he and I like like a had a fan. connect. Yeah, yeah, he was really into it. He was genuinely... Uh, he wasn't there to mock us. No, it was all. He was positive. all. He yeah. was into it. So he I love. Yeah, he was, and I really, en- I enjoyed that. And he's that a was little man, right? He's not really tall. No, he's not tall, but he, I'm not going to say he's short. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was. He was a cutie. He looked. Not, he was. Just, he it was, was fun. Cutie. He's a cutie. Yeah. To me, I like his mustache. He's I did. I like the dark mustache. Feature. Right. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a magnum. The P. mustache. I. Yes, mustache. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Am I pronounced mustache. Like no, okay. Uh, who was the biggest? I hate saying it like this to you, but who was in your era mm-hmm. when you're competing? Who was a real D I C K to work with? Mm-hmm. The guy D I C K to work with. Mm. Like what guy had the worst reputation as far as like total? Mm. Um, I was I always say, curious about. No, that. yeah. You know, I'm not going to say that Wayne DeMilla, that he was a dick. Okay. I'm not going to say that. Uh, but You just uh, said that. Yeah. But Wayne, you, in the beginning, it was kind of scary because his personality, wow. his kind of, uh, he was very plain spoken and he would say things. And if you're a new athlete and a woman, it could be intimidating, mm. but I I learned and became comfortable and wow. to to be able to swim with the sharks. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So, but I I actually, um, gosh, later I guess I learned to have respect for and a better understanding of a lot of the individuals, because there's a lot of insecurity, a lot, yes. a lot of egos, mm-hmm. and they come in all different forms. Judges, uh, it could be uh, expediters, I've seen it in uh, promoters, and that insecurity, and it comes to you in all directions. You just have to be really prepared, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. What do you want people to remember you most for? What is your legacy? Mm-hmm. Um, see, what is my legacy? I know I had to ask you. Yeah, yeah I, you, I got you. You know what I think my legacy? What I what I really hope is is that, I mean, from the pure place of being a competitor, I so enjoyed um, being on stage and uh, doing the posing routines, and so I feel like I brought the um, entertainment of, oh, definitely. you know, of trying to, uh, within that one minute that I would have one on minute. stage to get the audience to see 
everything I was trying to show them in that one minute to get to grasp to get their attention. Um, and knowing what I know now about that whole process of performing, it's hard to uh, to do that consistently. And now I feel like I hear music and I hear things and I think that's gosh, just be a great song to do a routine to and you diet down train hard and supplement smart for months when the time comes to step on stage don't leave your tan to chance go with the pros pro tan number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the olympia for the last 15 years don't step on stage without it pro tan and I visualize Are you saying you're going to be doing a guest posing routine? Are you making a comeback? Is that <laughs> yeah. what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Because right. you're not really officially retired, uh -huh. right? You've not really officially said, I'm retired. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I've, I've officially retired twice. Oh, okay. Right. So I'm dead. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that, though, when people say that. I think that's, that's such a sign of, like, respect when you guys do it. But you know, like, you guys would be at... Talking about me, like, oh, my God, I can't believe Linda Murray. Did you hear? She is trying to come back. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. Hey, listen, anything's possible, right? I got I to gotta put it out there. I like the entertainment. I like yes, it. I know. It's Look, good, you're, you're one you. of the greatest of all time, well, I, and I shouldn't say yeah, that. Because yeah, greatest. I know the goats, right? Yeah, I just learned that. Yeah, greatest of all time. Yeah. Mm. Some people get upset when that's said. And for me... Honest to God, like, that's so crazy. Like, are you going to get upset because somebody... Like, see, that's that's an example of what I was talking about, like having somebody reel you in. You know, that that's an immaturity that probably the first Linda Murray, I would have, when I competed in the 90s, sure. Sure. That, that's something that <clears throat> would bo have bothered me. But now, like... Once I came back, like, how you how are you going to let somebody, like, define or to the point where you're so upset because someone introduced me as the greatest of all time? If you know you're the greatest of all time, you know, nobody's a threat. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. like that's crazy. I, and I would never say it out loud to somebody. That's another example of... You just you you don't got you don't have it together. Well, I don't know the whole story, but I totally yeah. understand. I, yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and I have mad. And the thing of it is, I have mad respect for. To me, I don't care if you've won the Olympia twice. I have mad res I have mad respect for Iris Kyle. I have mad respect for Kim Chazewski. I have mad respect for Rachel McLish. I've never met Rachel McLish. We've been. Oh, really? She's the only one that I've not. I have not met. Why is that? Because Rachel, honestly, Rachel is, she's always kept distance between her I've and that. us. We're right. the extreme. Why? She's trying to hold on yeah. to some thought or That's belief that we're the extreme and, you know. I thought it was really what nice what you guys put together a few years ago, bringing back all the old, you mm -hmm. know, all the Olympia winners. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. Yeah. And she was the only person, I think, yeah. that wasn't there. Yeah, she was. Well, Carla Dunlap. Yep, oh, my God. I know. Carla. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. So I know. It is what it is. So. Yeah. <laughs> Kiki. Yep. Kiki. Kiki if Aloma. You, if you ask some of these people today who these people are, mm -hmm. I have no idea. Yeah. In our sport. And I'm yeah. like, right. Really? These are the mm -hmm. people like yourself who made our sport today what it is. Mm -hmm. If wow. we didn't have you or any, we wouldn't mm -hmm. have this. Corey and I, yeah. No. That's so deep, yeah. But it's true, though. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, uh, time flies by. Oh, don't even say that. Now I you know. make me feel old. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. That's why I tell you guys out there, like, enjoy competing. It's Okay, so I'm going so awesome. to throw you another one. You ready? Yes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever look at some of these girls? I know you do. Come on. Yeah, Everybody yeah. does. Sure. You ever look at some of these girls and say to yourself, crossing that stage, I can kick your ass? If I was competing, I would blow you away. You ever mm -hmm. think about that? Um, Has that ever once? And, and, and all your oh, years, like, you know, have you thought? Yes. I mean, and to be honest with you, 
it doesn't even take them being on stage. <laughs> okay. We could have I could have a conversation with them on the phone. And, <laughs> okay. I'm serious. Because anytime you don't understand like the connection between mind and body. Right. And anytime you don't understand that, you know, the winner of a competition, there's a combination of things going on that makes her the winner, like makes okay. him the right. winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not about, it. again, yes, size, symmetry, shape, your, uh, your leanness, all that's important. But at the same time, you got to be able to pull all that together and have your head right. And even if you pull it all together and you win it one time, usually when somebody wins, you know, when Andrea won the Olympia that first time, you know, for somebody like myself or Ronnie Coleman or Kim Shazewski, we're we know now it's the challenging time. Can you do it a second time? Can you hold sure. what's going on inside of you and what people are now going to be constantly bombarding you with? Can you maintain, uh, stay in your lane? Right, right. Can you stay, stay focused? Yeah. And a lot of times people can, and you recognize that right away. You know, yes. you know, and and I know that that's part of what I'm now. I can say this out loud. That's part of what makes me a champion. That's part of what made me successful. Is that I had that ability to stay focused, mm-hmm. and even in times when my physique was off, you know, four weeks out, I had to still stay focused. I had to still try to pull it together the best that I could pull it together. How did you do that, though? That's hard. How did you do that? What were you telling yourself? Yeah. Oh, gosh, what was I telling myself? Yeah, because you gave me, like you just said, okay, I was four weeks out and I was behind. You was behind. So then what were you telling yourself? Like, I can still, you said you're still very focused. So Mm -hmm. what was going, like, you're Mm -hmm. like... I know I can do this. I know mm-hmm. I can pull it off. Is that mm-hmm. what you're thinking? Is yeah. Yeah. I know I could pull it off. And it, I know. Um, and that's where people that they want to to compete. I mean, there's so many different levels, you know, those that want to compete. And they're that person in the gym always talking about competing. Yeah. They train really hard. They take drugs. They do all these sure. things. And they don't have the ability they even start dieting. They don't have the ability to follow through. Sure. Get the tan on their body, put the get the suit, step on the stage, walk up there, and do a pose. There's different levels. So, I mean, you just have to know. And that's the most challenging part about what we do is stay on track. Follow the plan. Just because homeboy over here said, or this girl over here said, you should do this and that, and you're you're right. yeah. you're holding fat or water, like don't deviate. No, because I mean, in my opinion, in the at the in the end, it matters what you look like on that stage at that moment, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, right. I mean, you can look like you're dog right. crap a few days before, but then mm-hmm. come stage time, holy smokes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's yeah. what matters. Yeah, I mean, that's I, what matters. I think. That's you know. what matters. But yeah, it's funny how our sport can be. But man, we have a great sport. Mm-hmm. Got a great league, one of the best in the. I mean, in the mm-hmm. world. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, how yeah. many? Let's see. It's in the fifty-eight world. years now with the Olympia. Yeah, in and the you world. actually do the commentary. You've been doing the commentary for the Olympia for many years. I mean, you've done mm-hmm. lots and lots of stuff. Yeah, and it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's fun. Such a well, great opportunity. Listen, there's to do no that other now. female bodybuilder that I think. Who has done as much as you? Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? Hmm. I don't think so. I mean, look, yeah, Corey yeah. would do a few things, but I mean, right, like, like you were present in the being involved. Present yeah, yeah, in the and sport. always in the spotlight. I mean, you're there. Mm-hmm. And for me, again, what I love mm. so much about you mm-hmm. is no matter who it is, you're always so going to that person, giving them words of encouragement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it could be some little amateur person. It could be just a stranger. Mm-hmm. You treat them, I, I'm going to say just like this, mm-hmm. you treat them like they're family. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you're not, there's uh, no distance. You're yeah. like close with them and everything. <laughs> yeah. There is no six feet I, apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I even have like sometimes it's funny because my, my friends like when I talk about like I probably have 
I'm going to say seven guys in my life that, uh, uh, I'm not, of course, I'm not going to say they're kind of dorky. Like they got that name, that title, like they, they normally, and I met them all like at bodybuilding shows and they just like to kind of hang around us or, you know, and none of them have tried to like say, how big are your biceps or, oh, I know. Okay. Can you, yeah. can you wrestle? Can you, I bet your yeah. thighs, you could just crush my, <laughs> right, right. my head or anything like that, you know, but yeah. And I'm, and then I had to ask myself like, but I love them. Yeah, you, know, you do because they're really good guys yeah. and good friends. And they bought a ticket. <laughs> they bought a ticket, and they genuinely like support us. Yes, absolutely. So I mean, it's just far as just like athletes. I mean, I love the sport. You know, you totally love the sport. Mm-hmm. So you have FemFlex Friday too. Yes. So you're you're a promoter. You're a superstar promoter. You've mm-hmm. got fun, you're a host on FemFlex Friday. You're an ambassador of Wings of Strength. Mm-hmm. All this stuff. Femflex Friday, by the way, incredible show mm-hmm. what you guys yeah. do over there. Oh, that's nice. Um, now, it's not just about women, right? Or is it just about women? Well, it's, it's, it's about women. Our focus is on women and um, our focus. So men are involved because men are part of our lives. So we like to talk about relationships. Sure. We like to talk about your trainer. Your trainer could be a man. We could talk about, you know... Man versus a woman. Who do you prefer? You know, that type of thing. Yeah, it's our issues, our topics. How do you feel when you walk into studios? I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but when you walk into Wings of Strength Olympia headquarters, as soon as you walk in, you you see this huge picture, a giant-sized Linda Murray, and then, of course, Alina Uh next to you. Uh Um, That's got to be, I mean, when you walk in every day, you're like, oh, that's me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You get the, like a rush every time you see that, or I do. I mean, I remember when Jake first asked for a picture of me, and then he was planning on putting a large, you know, it's what more than think? like yeah. life size because right. it's, it's like huge. three times my size. I mean, and you're looking down like you're going. That's a you great know, shot. girl. I'm just gonna say like where I am today, like just to how the connection with Wings of Strength and how this whole thing worked itself out, like, I can't even tell you when I say to athletes, like, stay focused, stay present, and whatever you want, you can, whatever you ask for, you will receive. Like, but you, you really will. And like, I clearly remember thinking about the distress and what women, what we were in, like when they decided they were taking Olympia away and I had a whole lot of things going on in my body, my mind, like, okay, now what do I do? This is my second retirement. I came back. They gave the women Mm $20,000. Like, of course I'm not coming back for the money, but it's like, like now what, why am I coming back? And well, I was coming back because I, I loved looking like a female bodybuilder. Sure. I enjoyed that body and that attention. And then I knew that that would also be my vehicle to have conversations and to talk to the youth and the women, talk to you guys today. Say, listen, like, like hold on, you know? Right. Um, so to see my, to know that I lined myself up, I didn't just, I was so in alignment I was vibrating from such a perfect place that I found myself in alignment with Jake Wood. Sure. Yeah. And Wings of Strength. Mm-hmm. Same with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because yes. it wasn't like I tried to plan anything. I tried to make something happen. I just recognized that whatever I was doing, it felt good. Sure. I couldn't worry about, oh, you know, Ronnie Coleman, he retires and... You know, he's got a movie on Netflix and, oh, you know, he gets like $400,000 oh, yeah, or right, 250000 right. first place. I don't care right. if he gets 250000 first place. I don't care if I got 20000 first place. So that place. doesn't mean anything to you, the money? The money means something to me, but I think where people, yeah, because of course money is like a sign of like, uh, like respect sure. and how they see you. However, when you are the champion or... If you're on your way to being the champion, sure. which we all sure. we all are, you cannot focus on money. Like, 
Some do, though. And they don't do well. Right. Yeah, I agree. They don't do well. So they can focus on the money. I mean, I can tell you how many people over the last 20 years in this industry, men and women, that were whiners, and they were always talking about what's not, and they're no longer here. Right. Yeah. And when I say they're no longer here, I don't mean dead. I'm just saying no, no, I they it. couldn't yeah. keep up. Right. Because they were too trying to get with somebody else. I know. You don't have to worry about that. The universe will always provide for you and mm-hmm. always bring you the way you operate, the way you, your energy, the place where you're vibrating from. You don't have to worry about a thing. No. No. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Whatever you put out to the universe comes back to you. Absolutely. So you always want to throw positive things out there. You get negative, mm-hmm. you're going to cut all this negative stuff. Mm-hmm. But no, I totally agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. So I have to ask, what do you do now that you're not competing anymore mm-hmm. besides running shows and FinFlex Friday? Um, what do you do in your spare time? Do you mm-hmm. have any hobbies? Yeah, let's see. Well, I'm like, I love working on puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> I just okay. bought a new puzzle. With seven cats. Cats? It's Do you have cats? Cat puzzle. I have two cats. Huh. Will and Martin, and I named oh, them, Martin. they're two boys, obviously, and I named them after the movie Bad Boys with <laughs> okay. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. So one's name's Will, I call him Willie, and then there's Martin, and I call him Marty, and they're my love. I actually adopted them from Bill Dobbins. I've had them oh, for almost 10 he years. He had so many cats. He has so many cats, yeah. I think he must have like 50 cats. Yeah, that's what I did. I rescued. Oh. So I have two from a litter of four, and he has wow. the, other, he, the other two. Yeah. <laughs> so you do puzzles. I love puzzles, man. Like, you know, puzzles. like Keeps person, the mind going. Keeps the mind yeah. going, yeah. I, I've had some, you know, challenging times where... Um, and this is the thing we were talking about in retirement. I've had, I don't know, maybe three episodes in my life where you feel lost. Sure. You know, after the first Olympia and retiring, and then I got married, and that was my solution. It wasn't my solution, because I don't want to make, like, sure. my soon-to-be ex think that, that was right. what it was about. Right. You know what I mean? But um, when you're making those transitions, it's just tough. Do you feel, as we, you know, you mentioned your ex, do you feel better now? Do you feel more relieved? Do you feel like free mm-hmm. being away? Mm-hmm. Like done with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really like working on it. I'm almost sure. there. Sure. I'm almost really there. Just, But I definitely feel free. Oh, I'm free. I had to ask you that. I definitely feel free. Who was your best? I'm, I'm, we got to wrap things up, but who was your best friend um, competing? Like, do you have any guy friends that you're very close with mm-hmm. that you're like, okay, this is my homie or girls? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. Well, my best friend that I, um, one of my best friends, Terry Gillum. Okay. Her and I started competing in Michigan together in like 1984. Wow. Um, and she still looks amazing. She just didn't continue to go on and become a pro, but she reached a very high level yeah. of competition. Um, so I would definitely say say that Terry is, and um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I have some others. Someone else came to mind, but Terry's the first person. Are you and Ronnie close? Ronnie Coleman? Uh-huh. You know, uh, I would say... you guys both the eight-time title. Right, so right. Yeah. No, I mean, you know what? I'm going to say that Ronnie and I close in the sense that um, through Vicky Gates, because Vicky was a fellow competitor. Oh, yeah, I remember and Vicky. And so she I remember tank. when I think of Ronnie, I always think of Vicky, sure. and I remember like before he won the Olympia. I thought they were a great couple. They were a great they couple. Were. They really did. Uh-huh. And I know that Ronnie knows that. Yeah, Sorry to were, the wife, but I know he knows, like, they were a great she totally had his back. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. They were, I love them together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Linda, listen, I'm really looking forward to mm-hmm. the Atlanta show, the Savannah, seeing you at all the shows, FemFlex Friday. Look, I get, to, I, I'm so lucky I get to see you all the time. Yeah, I know. I'm, and I'm talk lucky. to you. Right. Like, I'm that's lucky a treat. To, I know. Carol, we are, we're so blessed. Well, listen, again, this is why I got to thank Jake Wood, because it wasn't for him. 
we wouldn't have you here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I'm right. He just, man, and he does it with such style. So it's so fun. And, and lots of wine. Yes, wine and <laughs> first class and big pictures of me on the wall oh and well, Film Flex Friday, well, Fit rock star. Well, uh, again, it's such an honor having you here. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah. And uh, being very blunt about things. I have learned a lot. I always do from you. Mm -hmm. And um, listen, if there's anything you want to say to your fans, mm -hmm. you want to give us your social media or whatever. Yeah, please do. yeah. Just to fans, you know, guys, uh, this season is coming up, and just enjoy, like, enjoy when you're on the stage. Yeah, because man, I wish I could. God, my knees and legs. I wish I could still put together posing routines and do all of that stuff. So I just get so much enjoyment out of you guys. So you guys stay healthy. Stay healthy, okay? Stay focused. You're the champion. How do we find you on FemFlex Friday? Yeah, you can find me on FemFlex Friday. We are on YouTube. We also have on um, Muscle and Fitness. If you go on Muscle and Fitness okay. online. What time does your show air? Fridays at 12? No. Uh, yes, I, I okay. believe it. Yes. All right. All right. Every Friday, Femflex Friday. 66% of women make Six, up the division. That's right. right. 66%. It's all go. about us. Well, Linda, again, thank you so much. The Rockstar signing off. Until next time.